with gratitude to Allah the Exalted. Day by day, endless flocks of people from around the world are embracing the Shia faith. True Islam, under the guidance of those who the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi commanded us to follow after him, where he stated in Jami'u Tirmidhi, as reported, from Zayd ibn Arqan, who said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi said, indeed, I am leaving among you that which if you hold fast to them, you shall not be misguided after me. One of them is greater than the other. The Book of Allah, a rope extended from the sky to earth, and my Ahlul Bayt, they shall not separate until they meet me at the lake fan, at the lake fount. So look at how you deal with them after me. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi ordered us to withhold to two things after his demise. After this hadith, after this sermon, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi departed this earth, departed this life around two months after saying this command. This is the command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi to withhold to, the, to these two things, the Qur'an, the Book of Allah, and his purified progeny, his Ahlul Bayt. And he ended this hadith according to this narration in Jami'u Tirmidhi, which is in the opponent's corpus. It's not in our corpus. He said, so look at how you deal with them after me. See to how you will deal with these two commands, these two weighty things that I've commanded you to follow after me. The question here states, how did this ummah deal with your family, O Messenger of Allah? Did they honor your command and your last will? Or did they do the absolute contrary? If one was to open the books of history and read, he'd find, he'd find that Imam Zain al-Abideen, Ali ibn al-Husayn salawatullahi alayhi, states that if the Messenger of Allah had ordered them to oppress us and step on our necks and disturb us, paraphrasing what he said, blessings be upon him, then they would not have exceeded what they have done to us. Then how about if he had commanded us to, if he had commanded them to honor Ahlul Bayt? and follow them. Imam Zayn al-Abideen says, in other words, that if he had ordered them to attack us and you know, oppress us, then they would not have exceeded what they have already done for us, what they have already done to us. This oppression against the Ahlul Bayt, blessings be upon them, was commenced right after the demise of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi What did they do, O Messenger of Allah, to your daughter Fatima? The Lady of Heaven. 
blessings be upon her. They usurped her right. They insulted her. They burnt her house and inhumanely attacked her, causing her killing at 18 years of age and the killing of her unborn child, Al Muhassil, blessings be upon him. What did they do to Ali ibn Abi Talib, the commander of the faithfuls? 25 years of agony, oppression against him, blessings be upon him, to the extent that he isolated himself. If we look at the 25 years that Ali ibn Abi Talib, blessings be upon him, had after the demise of the Prophet, you'd realize that not many reports did come during these 25 years. in complete isolation almost. If one was to compare the 23 years that Ali ibn Abi Talib, blessings be upon him, was active during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the Prophet was alive, battles, incidents, events, you'd realize that the narrations that came to us within the 25 years after the, the demise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not maybe 5% or 10% in comparison with the narration that came during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just by that you'd know that Ali ibn Abi Talib, blessings be upon him, isolated himself from this oppressive regime of Abu Bakr and Umar la'anatullahi alayhima. Look at what they've done to Fatima, blessings be upon her, to the extent that she died angry upon them. And, her, and the Prophet's daughter, her grave, until now, is unknown. Where was Lady Fatima buried? Where is the grave of Lady Fatima? This question should be written on the streets, should be written everywhere. So that the answer to this question indicts Abu Bakr and Umar as usurpers and as oppressors and as tyrants who laid the foundations of oppression and tyranny against Ahlul Bayt, blessings be upon them. Every Shia should carry this question. Where is the grave of Lady Fatima? Where is the grave of Lady Fatima? This is the daughter of the Prophet. We know the graves of some of the companions of the Messenger of Allah, some of those who are even not had, those who never had that much of action and not much of remembrance in history. However, we know their graves. We know where they, where they were buried. But we don't know the grave of Lady Fatima, the daughter of the Messenger. Why did Lady Fatima order or will in her final will? to be buried at night and that Abu Bakr and Umar not prey on her. Why? Ask this question to yourselves, O oh, those of the Bakri sect, those who refer to themselves as Sunni. Are you sure you're upon truth? Are you sure you are ready to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst knowing that Fatima alayhi salam died angry upon Abu Bakr with your love to Abu Bakr, with your association to Abu Bakr and Umar? Are you ready? Ask yourselves these questions, ladies and gentlemen. Let us put our ego aside and think for our akhirah. We don't know when's our time. It's best to prepare ourselves, to ask, to ask ourselves these questions these profound questions in order to be upon certainty when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question goes forth to say, and what did they do to, the, to your grandsons, to your grandsons or messenger of Allah? What did they do to Al-Hasan, blessings be upon him? Betrayed. They betrayed him. They deserted him. 
and the grandson of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was a subject to assassinations. Do you know this? And Imam al Hassan, blessings be upon him, was a subject to over a dozen assassinations. Was stabbed in his thigh. Was poisoned in the other. And eventually, blessings be upon him, his soul departed his body as poison ran through his veins. Killed by Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. And what did they do to what did they do to Al Hussein? Blessings be upon him. What did they do to Abu Abdullah? What did they do to Al Hussein? Blessings be upon him. Massacred with his family at the sands of Karbala. What kind of animalistic ummah is this? What kind of inhumane ummah is this? The Messenger of Allah orders you to honor Ahlul Bayt and love them and care for them and follow them. Instead, what do they do? They kill them. They massacred Al Hussein, blessings be upon him and his family including a six-month-year-old baby, infant. They shot a three-headed arrow at an infant who cried for thirst, cried for water. And after all of this, we say, or they say, we follow Ahlul Bayt. No, we love Ahlul Bayt. What did you do to Ahlul Bayt? Blessings be upon them. Fatima killed. Her house was burnt. Her rib was broken. And she died angry upon this nation, as narrated by Bukhari, that she died angry upon Abu Bakr and Umar, and ordered that her grave to be not known. That she, bur that she be buried at night. Ali ibn Abi Talib, blessings be upon him. After being betrayed and after being deserted and come his reign, three battles, three civil battles, the first civil battles in, in the Islamic history. They all came against him. Ali ibn Abi Talib, he is the rightful successor of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He is the messenger of Allah. You can say a copy of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Identical to his character. This is why they narrate that when Ali ibn Abi Talib, blessings be upon him, was praying jama'ah, they narrated in Bukhari and, and uh, Muslim in their books. They said that the people said that may Allah bless him, he had reminded us of the prayer of the messenger of Allah. This is... A man who, is, who has absorbed the character of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Of course, three battles would commence against him. Aisha, Az-Zubayr, Talha, and Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan, then the Khawarij. And after that, Ali ibn Abi Talib used to walk alone in the, in the city of Kufa. When he used to walk in the, streets, in the streets, the people used to close the door in his face. Ali ibn Abi Talib was walking alone in the streets of Kufa. And then he used to say, blessings be upon him, when does... the criminal come and make my beard drenched in blood by the, by the wound of my head. Mata yati ashqaha, mata yati ashqaha. He used to say, blessings be upon him. Because he knows 
the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has given him from the knowledge of ghayb. He knows when he will die, he knows how he will die, and he knows who will kill him. And this is narrated also in the Bakri sources. Ali ibn Abi Talib used to walk in the streets and go to, goes to the mosque of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa to say, when does Abdul Rahman ibn Muljam come and kill me? He didn't say his name, but he says, when does the Ashqa comes? The Ashqa. The Ashqa is, is the most evil and most depraved, you can say, individual. When does he come and drench my beard? Ali ibn Abi Talib had a, had a large beard. Had a large and thick beard. It was thick. It is not long like the Bakriya. No, it is just like a lion, blessings be upon him. And, he, and when he used to smile, he used to spread on his chest. Like it was up to here, you can say. As we know from the narrations of Ahlul Bayt, that Mazada Anil Qabda, whatever that is longer than your hand, or the whole, the hand of your, the, uh, the, you can say, the grasp of your hand, is Lihya to Iblis. You can see the da'is of the Bakri sect. They are all, they have longer uh, beds. They have the beds of Iblis. Allah. Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, we used to say, when does that individual, the Ashqa, comes and drenches my bed with my blood? And he specifically said, with which wound? He said, with the wound of my head. This must be upon him. And that is what's happened. Come 19th of the month of Ramadan, at dawn prayer, Ali ibn Abi Talib, blessings be upon him, was struck on his head as he fell into prostration. Al Hassan, blessings be upon him, poisoned. Al Hussein, killed. Ali ibn al Hussein, Zayn al Abidin, poisoned. And his house was burnt. Muhammad al Baqir, blessings be upon him, poisoned. Ja'far al Sadiq, poisoned. And his house was burnt. Imam al Kadhim, blessings be upon him imprisoned for over 10 years or a dozen years and then poisoned. Imam al-Rida poisoned. Imam al-Jawad poisoned. Imam al-Hadi imprisoned then poisoned and Imam al-Askari blessings be upon him. Imprisoned then poisoned. And after all of this, they come to us and say that we follow Ahlul Bayt. We follow Ahlul Bayt and we love them. When we know that this is far from being factual. We look at their tafsir books, we look at their fiqh book, jurisprudence book, books, jurisprudential books. We see that Ali ibn Abi Talib says that this is the hukum, this is the ruling. They go and take the ruling of Mujahid. They go to take the ruling of Abu Huraira. Imam al-Baqir, blessings be upon him, says this is the ruling. They take the ruling of who? A Shafi'i. They don't follow al so this is, this, is a, this is a lie that they say to you. It is not factual, my friends their brothers and sisters. They are trying to fool you with this illusion that they follow Ahlul Bayt when in reality they do not. They do not. Read the books of fiqh, read the books of tafsir, you would find that most times, if not all times, Ali ibn Abi Talib says this is the tafsir. They take the tafsir of who? Of Mujahid, Muqatil. Ali ibn Abi Talib says, this is the ruling. They take the ruling of Aisha. And so on with his, with his sons, blessings be upon them. Oh. It is 
it was it reached to an extent the oppression and tyranny and neglect of Ahlul Bayt blessings be upon them reached to, to an extent that Abu Dhar one of the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, who remained loyal to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, went and screamed in Mecca screamed in Mecca screamed as narrated in Musadrak al-Hakim, al-Musadrak ala sahihain volume 2, page 343. From Hunch al-Kinani, who said, I heard Abu Dhar whilst holding the door of the Kaaba saying, he hold, Abu Dhar was holding the door of the Kaaba in Mecca. He screamed. What did he say? He said, Behold, whoever knows me, then I am who you know. And whoever abjures me, then I am Abu Dhar. Who is Abu Dhar? Do you know who is Abu Dhar? He is the individual who the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said, as reported in Jami'a Tirmidhi, Hadith 201. There is no one more truthful that the sky has shaded and the earth has carried than Abu Dhar. There is no one more truthful that the sky has shaded and the earth has carried than Abu Dhar. He is the Siddiq. He is the Siddiq. Not Abu Bakr. One should say Abu Dhar al-Siddiq. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said it. مَا أَظَلَّتِ الْخَضْرَاءُ وَلَا أَقَلَّتِ الْغَبْرَاءُ أَصْدَقَ مِنْ أَبِي ذَرٍ We go to the second hadith. The, the last hadith was 201 in Jami'at Tirmidhi. We go to 202. Narrated Abu Dhar, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi said, There is no one more truthful in speech, nor fulfilling in promises, that the skies have covered, or that the sky has covered, and the earth has carried than Abu Dhar, the likeness of Isa ibn Maryam. Ibn Maryam. Abu Dhar has the likeness of Isa ibn Maryam. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa So Umar ibn al-Khattab la'anahu Allah out of jealousy. What did he say? So Umar ibn al-Khattab said, this is a consideration. I'm reading, I'm reading the verse So Umar ibn al-Khattab said, out of envy. As if out of envy. So do you acknowledge that for him, O Messenger of Allah? Do you say that he is really Siddiq? That he is the most truthful in speech and most fulfilling in promises and he has the likeness of Isa ibn Maryam? Do you say that, O Messenger of Allah? Do you acknowledge this? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Yes, so acknowledge it. So acknowledge it. Having said that, we return to the hadith in Al-Mustadrak. Volume 2, page 343. From Hunch al-Kinani who said, I heard Abu Dhar, the truthful, the Siddiq, a man who was firm from the start. A mountain, Abu Dhar, a mountain. I heard Abu Dhar saying whilst holding the door of the Kaaba, he never remained silent, Abu Dhar. He always called for the haqq of Imam Ali alayhi salam and the haqq and the right. He always called for the rights of Imam Ali alayhi salam and always called for the rights of Ahlul Bayt. Blessings be upon them. On the door of the Kaaba, he's screaming to the people of Mecca, Behold, whoever knows me, then I am who you know. And whoever abjures me, then know that I am Abu Dhar. I heard the messenger, blessings be upon him and his family, say, the example of my Ahlul Bayt is the example of Noah's Ark. 
whomever, whoever embarks upon it shall be saved, and whoever falls behind shall drown. Abu Dhar, blessings be upon him, the Siddiq, the true Siddiq of this nation. Said it blatantly. O oh, people, go to Ahlul Bayt. O oh, people, this is the command of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. They are Noah's Ark. They are the Ark who if you embark upon it, you shall be saved. And if you fall behind, you shall drown. Heed the words of Abu Dhar, O oh people from the Bakri sect. Heed the words of Abu Dhar and save yourselves. Free yourselves from the deceit of your scholars. Have some honesty. Pray your nights. Pray Salatul Layl and ask Allah sincerely to guide you and show you the path. O oh Allah, pave my way to what pleases you. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you are truly sincere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would guide you. As he has guided many. Alhamdulillah ta'ala. And this hadith is authentic. Al-Hakim uh, al-Naysaburi says, هذا حديث صحيح على شرط مسلم ولم يخرجه. This narration is authentic upon the condition of Muslim. Muslim and Naysaburi was very staunch, very strict, and they did not narrate it. This hadith is authentic. Heed the advice of Abu Dhar. Heed the advice of Abu Dhar before it's too late. Join the thousands upon thousands from around the world who have embarked on this ark. Do not fall behind, for by Allah you will be regretful on the day that, that regret comes with no benefit. By Allah, those who fall behind They shall be regretful on the day that regret comes with no benefit. It is only a matter of time, ladies and gentlemen. And I advise the dear brothers and sisters to join the thousands from around the world, from Algeria, from Morocco, from Egypt, from Iraq, from Kuwait, from Pakistan, from Indonesia, from Europe, France, Germany, Belgium, even to Japan and China, we had converts, alhamdulillah. We are known, alhamdulillah, this, this organization, alhamdulillah, its main focus is to bring peoples, people from around the world to guidance. Subhan, I'd like you to inshallah play a short montage video of those from around the world announcing their witness testimonies to the Shia faith. And after that, inshallah, we will have a guest on the show, Brother Muhammad from Kuwait, to guest him, inshallah, and listen as to how he came to Shia Islam, inshallah. After the video, Inshallah. <laughs> ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأنه لا شبيه له ولا نظير وأنه لا شبيه له ولا نظير من أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان 
زفت ابو بكر والزفت والافراد الفريق اللي ودنا بداية ده اللي وردنا ورعان الشمس والله منهم وربنا ياخذهم في النار هم في النار في النار في النار وهم رايحين النار 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 لانهم ودوا العالم كله في النار ان ان هذه القناه موجوده لان هي دي اللي هتنشر الدين الاسلام الصحيح واللي هتدخل الناس الجنه وهي للناس المنتظر هو دي للناس المنتظر عليه السلام وعرفت وسمعت صوتك وكلماتك ما من سؤال يخطر في بالي الا اجدها عندك ابو هريره يروي ويروي عائشه تروي وانس بن مالك يروي وفلان علان يرمون اين باب مدينه العلم هذا الذي جعلني ابحث حتى وصلت الى ابنائه الطاهرين وعلمت انهم والله لم يقصروا بهذا الدين فيا ايها الامه لا تحرموا انفسكم من الاستبصار والهدى اتبعوا اهل نبيكم ايها القوم هؤلاء اهل نبيكم هؤلاء ليسوا اعداء نبيكم اهل بيت النبوه تسالون الشيخ يرد عليكم يجيبكم قل لماذا التعنت؟ ومغره من كل عيب وشيء <تصفيق> فوجدت السنه الحقيقيه التي انا قد مضيت زمنا ابحث عنها وجدتها في مسجد اهل البيت وارتحت الى ذلك قبل وابناء اهل المعصومين حجج الله وابناء اهل المعصومين حجج الله صلوات الله عليه والذي اثر فيا كثيرا 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 واشكر الشيخ ياسر الحبيب واقبل يديه واقبل راسه على العمل الجبار الذي قام به بالسلسله المتكونه من 86 حلقه لكي زيف الاسلام هذه روعتني اشهد ان بضعه الرسول صلى الله عليه واله فاطمه الزهراء وابناء اهل المعصومين حجج الله وابناء اهل المعصومين حجج الله صلوات الله عليهم باركت ان شاء الله واحاطك الله تعالى برعايته واساله تعالى ان يثبتك ويرفع مقامك في الدنيا والاخره ان شاء الله رحم الله حضرتك <تصفيق> الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا دائما ابدا with gratitude to Allah the exalted day by day day by day thousands upon thousands are embracing Shia Islam and are embarking on this ark of salvation the ark which the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi said that it is the ark of Noah and whoever embarks upon it shall be saved and the one who falls behind shall drown Alhamdulillah we have a new convert with us today who has been researching for some time and today inshallah he will announce his tashayya inshallah after a long research, I welcome dear brother Muhammad from Kuwait. Assalamu alaikum, dear brother. Assalamu wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Hayakum Allah wa bayakum. May Allah bless you, inshallah, and I welcome you on this show. Thank you. I'd like to, inshallah, before I give you the ground to relay your message and relay your journey to Shia Islam, I'd like you to. Um, announce your shahada to the people yes a strong shahada inshallah that you let the world hear where the muslim inshallah rectifies his belief and embarks upon the ark of muhammad and his progeny blessings be upon him and his progeny are you ready inshallah yes inshallah say with me inshallah ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأنه لا شبيه له وأنه لا شهيد له وأنه لا شبيه له أو أو وأنه لا شديحة له شبيه شبيه شديحة له شديحة له ولا نظير ولا نظير جل جلاله I testify, I testify that there is no God but Allah alone. That there is no God but Allah alone. Who has no partner. Who has no partner. And I testify. And I testify that He the Exalted. That He the Exalted has no likeness nor resemblance. No likeness and no resemblance. In this belief, you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no likeness, no resemblance. Unlike the yes. Bakri sect who believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a face, has a hand, has a leg and has fingers yes. and jogs yeah. and wears gold and A beardless slippers. man. Exactly. Yes. And has curly hair. Yeah. <laughs> you cleanse, you cleanse your, your tawheed, you cleanse your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all of these deviations and kufr in reality. Alhamdulillah yes, that we uh, have this tawheed that is pure and extracted from the progeny of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu feekum. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Wa annahu khatamul anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Can you repeat that? Wa annahu. Wa annahu. خاتم الأنبياء خاتم الأنبياء المرسلين والمرسلين وسيد yes. الخلق أجمعين وسيد الخلق أجمعين ومبرأ ومبرأ من كل عيب من كل عيد عيب عيد وشيء وشيء صلى الله عليه وآله Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. I testify. I testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. The seal of all prophets and messengers. The seal of all prophets and messengers. The master of all creation. The master of all creation. And that he is irreproachable. And that he is irreproachable. And impeccable. And impeccable. In this belief, you believe that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, is the master of all creation and is, and is irreproachable and impeccable. You don't believe as they believe that the Messenger of Allah was bewitched. You don't believe as they believe that the Messenger of Allah did obscene things as Aisha narrates. You don't believe as they believe that the Prophet of Allah was delirious. We believe that the Messenger of Allah is irreproachable and impeccable from all aspects. Blessings be upon him and his family. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anna Amir al Mu'minin Aliya Waliullah. Anna Amir al Mu'minin Aliya Waliullah. I testify. I testify. That Ali. That Ali. The commander of the faithfuls. Commander of the faithful is the vicegerent of Allah. Is the vicegerent of Allah. Ahsan. Ashhadu anna Fatima al-Zahra. Ashhadu anna Fatima al-Zahra. Wa abna'ah al-Ma'asumin. Wa abna'ah al-Ma'asumin. Hujjaj Allah. Hujjaj Allah. Salawat Allah alayhim. Salawat Allah alayhim. I testify. I testify that Fatima al Zahra, the Fatima al Zahra, and her infallible sons, and her infallible sons are the divine proofs of Allah. Are the divine proof of Allah. Abra'u ila Allah. Abra'u ila Allah. Min Abi Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman. Min Abi Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman. Wa Aisha wa Hafsa. وعائشة وحفصة وسائر أعداء أهل بيت رسول الله وسائر وسائر 
وساعدني وساعدك أعداء أعداء أهل بيت رسول الله أهل بيت رسول الله I stand before Allah I stand before Allah In disassociation In dissociation From Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman Aisha, Hafsa Aisha and Hafsa And all the enemies of the pure household of the Prophet Blessings be upon him and his project And all the family of uh, and, and all, all the, enemies the enemies of the family Of, of the, the family of the Prophet So Allah Ahsans, In this belief You disassociate from all of the enemies of the progeny as yes. our master Imam al-Sadiq blessings be upon him say upon being asked that there are people who love you but also love your enemies are they also saved are they also Shia the Imam asked yes. he said the, the Imam said hey hurts no indeed they have uh, indeed one has lied if they have claimed that they love us but also love our enemies. One needs to disassociate from the enemies of Al-Muhammad, blessings be upon him. Ashhadu Ashhadu Anna Aba Bakrin Anna Aba Bakrin Wa Umar wa Uthman Wa Umar wa Uthman Wa Aisha wa Hafsa Wa Aisha wa Hafsa In Nar In Nar I testify I testify that Abu Bakr, that Abu Bakr, Umar Uthman, Umar Uthman, Aisha and Hafsa, Aisha and Hafsa are certainly in hellfire. Are certainly in hellfire. In hellfire. Allah ibarak bikum. May Allah bless you, insha Allah, and plant your feet firmly. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to grant His religion victory through you. And your likes, insha'Allah, from the believers. May Allah bless you, insha'Allah, and grant you the highest ranks in Jannah with Muhammad and his pure family. Blessings be upon them. Yes. Today, insha'Allah, insha right now, I would like to give you the ground to relay your fascinating story to Shia Islam. Yeah. Go ahead, insha'Allah, in the name of Allah. Yes. Uh, my, yani, my first time ever hearing about the Shias. Yani, you know, like, they don't tell you that there's another school of thought that's called uh, Shias unless they want to curse them, right? They want yeah. to say, you know, Lanat on the Rafidis, whatever. Um, so my first ever time hearing about Shias was back when I was 11. Uh, it was when ISIS uh, suicide bombed Imam al-Sadiq Masjid yeah. in Kuwait. Yani, you may Allah grant all the martyrs Jannah. Allahumma. Yani, uh, this was the first ever time I heard about Shias. And everybody was talking about how there's a Shia mosque that blew up and ISIS is responsible. And, you know, I was I was really confused. Like, who, who are these Shias? What mm -hmm. do they believe? Aren't they just Muslims? Why are people blowing them up? Yani. Yeah, that, that was like my thought process at the time. After that, I never really heard about Shias again until I was 13. Mm. I was uh, on YouTube and I found this one video from uh, Wahhabi channel. It was this video that uh, all the Ayatollahs, Shias believe that they're magicians. Mm. And these magicians believe that the Quran is corrupt and uh, the Prophet is going to hell and the actual Prophet is Ali. Uh, no. And <laughs> yani, <laughs> after the yani, now that I think back about it, yani, it's it's very funny. Of course. After <laughs> that, after that, uh, I stumble upon Sunnah discourse videos. Mm. Uh, I think the first one I watched was Twelve Imams equals One God, or something okay. like that. Yeah, and then. After that, I, I stumbled upon uh, anti majus and all their very cringy memes on their channel. And Yanni, I, I was really influenced by it. I thought, Yanni, all Shias are kafirs and uh, they're all going to hellfire and they believe these, these, and these things. 
They believe the Quran is corrupt. They believe that, you know, Ali was the actual prophet, so on and so forth. Mm. After that, uh, I started frequenting Shia chat. Do you know Shia chat is? Yes. Yeah. So I started frequenting Shia chat and I, I started reading about uh, what is like the Shia perspective of all these things. This was around the time I was 15. Mm. And uh, yeah, anyway, what I read there, it was so different than what these people were saying we believe. And uh, yeah, I I stumbled upon some very good arguments. Mm. Like if Abdullah ibn Sabah was the one that created Shias and why are there so many narrations which back up the Shia view? Like Hadith al-Ghadir, Hadith al-Taklin, Hadith of the, Noah, of the Noah's Ark, Hadith of... Uh, Ali is to me as Harun was to, was to Musa and he's the Khalifa of all the believers after me. And yani, I, I stumbled upon all these hadiths and I was like, uh, you know, if Abdullah ibn Sabah created this, well, why are there so, many, so much proof mm. from Sunni books backing up our claims? Mm. And uh, from there, yani, I, I, st- I, I, you know, I used to argue with the people on Shia chat from the Sunni perspective and eventually, yani, my arguments were so weak that you know, I didn't believe them myself. Mm-hmm. And eventually, around the time I was 16, uh, yeah, this is a little embarrassing, but I, I used to go out to smoke during Fajr time. Yeah. So, yeah, and there, there's a Shia masjid mm. near where I smoke. And I went into there at once and I just started reading the mass on the Torba and like the Shia way with open arms. Mm. And after the namaz, they used to read the zakar uh, from Imam Zain al Abdin alayhi salam's book. Yes. And yani from there, yes. So from there, I, I uh, accept the Shia Islam and I stop smoking. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, what was yeah, that that's, my, that's my what, journey to Shia Islam. What was that dua that really well, affected you? I, uh, that is also in the Quran. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, <laughs> no, and uh, yani, I don't remember the entire dua. Yeah. Because as as I said, I, I don't well, know Imam Arabic Zainu very well. Al-Adin but Ali, Ali salam is known for his adaya. One, when he reads his yes. dua, he knows that this dua is not a normal dua, especially dua makarim al akhlaq for example. This yes. dua is, is what really affected me personally. Dua makarim al akhlaq. It is three pages long, around three pages long. It is a dua that is, you can say, is a dustur. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a book of principles, a book of law, or you can say a book of principles that you carry in your life throughout until, until you. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extracts, extracts your soul from your, from your body. And he's known, blessings be upon him, that one, when he just reads his dua, one finds Shia Islam. Yes. And it has happened multiple times before. Many people, when they read Sahifa Sajadiyah, sometimes also just to, you know, out of curiosity as what, what do the Shias have when they read, they know that this individual who these supplications are attributed to him must be a person who has connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that none does must be a person who is the divine authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamdulillah what are your plans inshallah for the future what do you intend to do and what do you intend to be I uh, I am thinking about uh, studying in a hawza MashaAllah. Uh, another problem is that uh, nobody in my family knows that I converted. So, yeah. Uh, that could be another conversation. But, uh, yeah, my, my plans are to study in Ahoza. Hmm. Uh, in Najaf, most probably, I don't want to go to Qom. Yeah. So, of course, if you choose to come and uh, be a part of. Uh, or a student in the Askariyain Seminary under Sheikh Al Habib, you're always welcome to come, yeah, inshallah, to, Lo- to London, yeah, UK, inshallah, and uh, 
you study there, you study here around 10 years, inshallah, and then you come out to be a scholar, inshallah, in religion. And you can face everyone, bad, inshallah. Yes. Allah uh, Can I just ask one more question? I'd like to say, what was like the final straw? The thing, the proof, the proof that finally said, that's it, Shia Islam is the truth. Oh, yeah, I, I can't say it. it's only one thing. I, th I think there are a number of things. Mm. Um, first of all, Abu Bakr, Umar, and Usman, I, I cannot accept them as caliphs mm. at all, ever. Especially when, that, yani, especially when his compared, own son, when his own son, Muhammad, you know, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr? Yeah, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. His, yes, his own Bakr. son, his own son, Abu Bakr's, you know, biological son, had disassociated from him. He went to Imam Ali alayhi salam, and of course, as you know, uh, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr was practically, you know, he, he grew up with Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali took care of him. And he grew up... He said he wanted to pay allegiance again. Exactly. He yes, went at the time of, of, of the reign of Imam Ali when Imam, Imam Ali had, uh, you know, had power. His power was regained. His rights was regained. Uh, he went to Imam Ali alayhi salam in the first early days and says, I want to pay you my allegiance, O oh, Imam. Imam yes. said, haven't you paid allegiance to us already? Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr responded, yes, indeed I have. However, I would like to pay you my allegiance upon the disassociation from my father. I completely dis He's my father, he's my biological father, but I disassociate from him. The Imam stretched his hand, blessings be upon him, and Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr puts his hands into the Imam's hand and said, I bear witness that you are an Imam whose, oblig whose uh, obligation to, or whose uh, you know, following is an obligation, and I testify that my father is in hell. And the Imam accepted. The Imam accepted this allegiance. And this matter actually, where, you know, where Abu Bakr disassociates from his father is actually proven also in Bakri sources and it's authentic it's also narrated in uh, uh, Musannaf Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba that's when Abu Bakr that's when Muhammad ibn yes. Abi Bakr went to Uthman ibn Affan and dragged him from his bed when they attacked Uthman ibn Affan uh, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr was part of was not just part he was the prominent he took a prominent role against the revolution against Uthman ibn Affan so yes. when they attacked Uthman's house Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, as reported in this authentic narration in, Mus in uh, Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, he entered with 12 men behind him. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, imagine the scene, yes. Uthman is punched up, he's roughed up a little bit towards the side. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr enters the house, 12 men behind him, he goes to Uthman and drags him from the bed. Drags him from the bed. I think I have this narration, let me see if I can mention it quickly. It's good that we mentioned this. I don't believe we've mentioned it before. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr drags Uthman by the bed and he says, sorry, it's not in Musannaf ibn Abi Shabba, it's in Tariq al-Madina ibn Shabba by Umar ibn Shabba. Yes. It's in volume 4, page 1028. He says this. He says, narrated from Ahmad bin Muawiyah, has narrated from Ismail ibn Mujalid uh, until the end of the chain from a Shabi that when Uthman ibn Affan was under siege for days. They asked him, meaning the rebels, the rebels asked him to step down, but he refused. He refused to step down. He wants his power. He's holding to his power. He's just like Muammar al Qaddafi. Yes. He's just like Hosni Barak. He's just like those dictators of our time. Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl. They love, they love the chair and they love the power, and that's it. I don't leave. Until he was forced down in the end. Um, until he says, then Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr entered after that. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr entered into to the house of Uthman. Thinking that Uthman is killed. He thought that Uthman is killed. But when he yes. saw him alive, he said, I see you helping Na'thal. He's calling Uthman Na'thal. So what, yes. probably one of his slaves are trying to you know, help Uthman ibn Affan, trying to mend him, etc. So it says, the narration states, then he took him by his bed. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr with 12 men behind him took Uthman by his bed. Uthman had a long bed, a very long bed. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen this terrorist in the UK. There's a guy called Abu Halima. <laughs> Abu Halima, this terrorist, uh, he has a giant bed, maybe up to his belly button, maybe be below it. Uthman had a bed like that and it was yellow. He used to dye his bed yellow. So yeah. uh, 
Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, the son of Abu Bakr, went and dragged Uthman by his bed, as the narration states. He then took him by his bed, dragging him from the room to the door of the house, dragging him from, his, from the room all the way to the door of the house where all the rebels are. From the door of the house. Mm -hmm. And said, You altered the book of Allah and changed it, O Na'thal. You altered the book of Allah and changed it, O Na'thal. This is according to this narration. Obviously, we don't believe in Tahrif at all. We believe that the Quran is preserved and uh, by word for word, and nothing has been changed, nothing has been added. Yeah. Uh, but so according to this narration, he means. About the codex. Yeah, what he means here is he changed it in, in a form of, you know, the text he changed and he perhaps bought verses, you know, forward and, and put verses behind. He changed the formation of the Quran according to. Uh, what's, what's he said? Obviously, that has a bath, that has, that has a long bath. It is not the case. We believe from our creed, from our perspective, we believe that this Quran, in this format, in this style, or in this you know writing, in the, the word for word verbatim is the way that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent. Is is the way that Allah is the way that the Messenger of Allah organized the Quran. That is what we believe, and we believe that that Imam Al Mahdi alayhi salam when he uh, returns, inshaAllah and the day that we, I and you, inshallah, be amongst his ranks. Uh, he will bring the Qur'an that is, uh, is organized hasb at tanzil according to the tanzil of the Qur'an, meaning the, the, the verses that came in Mecca will come out in one, in one uh, form, and the verses that came in, in, in Medina that will come out in, in, يعني, in that format. Each ayah will come out, will, will be formed according to which ayah came down first. You know what I mean? You with me? Yes. Brother Muhammad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we believe. And, accord, and, and on the other side will be the ta'weed, the interpretation to these verses. This is the Qur'an that, inshallah, will, uh, that the Imam al-Mahdi will come with. It is unique from the aspect of uh, organization, of formation, and unique from the aspect of interpretation. This interpretation is the interpretation of the Qur'an. You see, right now we live in a time where everyone says this verse means something, this other verse means something else. This verse means etc. the other one, uh, something else. They dispute with regards yes. to what the understanding of the Qur'an. Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, as the divine hujjah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will come out and remove and perish this disagreement with regards to the Quran, there will be one interpretation, one understanding. As our Imam السلام, says, in هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ wahid نَزَلَ مِنْ عِنْدِ الْوَاحِدِ This Quran is one who came, who was revealed by the one, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr says, uh, took hold by, of Uthman's beard and he grabbed it in a way where the jaw of Uthman was clashing with his teeth. The son of Abi Bakr, according to this authentic narration in the Bakri corpus, grabbed Uthman's bed in a way that the jaw of Uthman was clashing with his teeth. Such a, you know, strong way, you can say. And Uthman then said, I am not Na'thal. He responded to Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. He said, I am not Na'thal, but I am Amir al muminin and your father would have not taken hold of my bed. He says, I am not Na'thal in response to Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, but I am Amir al-Mu'min. He brings the right to himself. I am, he's, still, he's still prestige. He's still trying to maintain his arrogance. Ayyadhan Billah. And he says, my, but my father would not, your father would not, meaning Abu Bakr, would not have taken hold of my bed. Then Muhammad said, look at this, this, this verse. And this is an authentic narration. Muhammad brings this verse, which clearly say, states, which the meaning of this verse is literally, that Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr disassociates from his father and regards him as a misguider. He, re he recites this verse. This is Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. He's, he's uh, yani, a student of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He speaks with the Quran. He's a faqih. He knows his rulings. He knows what he has to do. He knows his taklif. He knows his duties. He says this. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr says, upon hearing Uthman's statement, where he said, I am not Na'thala, but I am Amir al-Mu'neen, and your father would have not taken hold of my bait, Muhammad said, it is not accepted from us to say on the day of judgment, 
ربنا إنا أطعنا سادتنا وكبراءنا فأضلون السبيلا It is not accepted from us to say on the day of judgment, O Lord, indeed we obeyed our masters and our elders and they have led us astray from the right way. Meaning, don't tell me what my father would have done or not have done. For it is not beneficial for me to say that I followed my father and my elder whilst they led me astray from the right way. I will not follow my, my father despite him being astray. Despite being, I will not uh, follow my father, despite him being my father, for he, would lead me, he, for he will lead me astray. This is the Iman of Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. An Iman of a person who was a student of Imam Ali alayhi salam, what can we expect? Yes, he's ready to disassociate from his father, ready to, to disassociate from all people. He doesn't have my mother, my father, my uncle, my sister, my... No, haqq is haqq. My, the truth and light is one. I go wherever Ahlul Bayt yes. take me. For they are the ark of salvation. And they are those who the Messenger of Allah ordered me to follow. Alhamdulillah. And this is a test, of course, by Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. By the way, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr was the subject to many trials. Many trials. But alhamdulillah, he passed through all and he is an example today for most converts and Shias worldwide. Alhamdulillah, it's hard. Allah ibarak bikum, Brother Muhammad. It was an honor to have you. And your story has been fascinating and interesting, mashallah. If there is a word that you'd like to conclude, advice for perhaps for those who are still seeking truth, still wavering and not knowing which is truth and which is not, you may, inshallah, say your message, inshallah. Uh, I would just... Uh like to say, Ahlul uh, Bayt, right? It's you have to follow the Quran and Ahlul Bayt. Yani, where where is Ahlul Bayt in your in your mother? It's nowhere. Yani, you have like what 50, 60 narrations from Ahlul Bayt. Uh, less than 20, less than two percent of your narrations are from Ahlul Bayt. Less than two percent of our narrations are not from Ahlul Bayt. Of course. And uh, and uh, yani, you, you need to understand uh, that Shiaism is the right path and you need to completely dissociate from these Dajjals, these Sheikhs that feed lies into your head. Because uh, at the end of the day, like, it's, it's nothing but lies. And yani, that's what I would like to say. Ahsant. May Allah bless you, inshallah, and illuminate your face and grants you life, insha'Allah, to be amongst the ranks of our Imam, blessings be upon him, our awaited Imam. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you this honor to meet your Imam and take orders from him, blessings be upon him. And I ask uh, that for myself also, insha'Allah. Allah ibarak bikum. Thank you very much for your call, dear brother Muhammad. And it was an honor to, it was an honor to have you. May Allah bless you, insha'Allah. Uh, Brother Subhan, if you can uh, tell us how much time do we have left and perhaps if we can take some calls or read out some of the questions in the chat. It's, uh, it's, it's 8 past 6, so I'm not sure how much we have to ask. Brothers, if you have any questions, if you would write them quickly in the YouTube chat and inshallah we will answer quickly. I noticed that CJ writes, he wrote, when will Ali Al-Habib answer us in the chat? I am here for you, inshallah. If I can suffice, inshallah, I will answer. If you write your question, inshallah. <clears throat> you like me to open the phone line? You may, you may do so, yes. You may do so. But I believe we don't have much time because we have the FedEx live show that is going to come after us. Yeah. Which I believe us and we've taken 10 minutes from their time. I'll uh, go check with Hisham. Right yeah, check with Hisham before we get in trouble. <laughs> so it uh, appears that they have a live show outside, so I'm not sure if we can continue. 
Oh. So I, okay. I, I think we might have time to take a call. Okay, no problem. Display display the number and on the screen, inshallah. Their brothers and sisters, the number is displayed on the screen. Whoever who would like to call in, inshallah, I'll be happy to take his call, inshallah. And also, if, if anyone has a question on the YouTube chat, they may state it, inshallah. said we have 35 minutes so it's plenty of time I uh, brother Muhammad Hassan Akhbari writes when will we have a second part of the Afghanistan episode? Inshallah, we'll be monitoring the um, unfolding events in Afghanistan. And inshallah, we will be covering some of the new uh, events that uh, are necessary for me to cover. But inshallah, there, sh there will be perhaps a video, uh, a video or a montage in that regard, inshallah, very soon, inshallah. Keep an eye out, inshallah. Sahih Hussain writes, yes, I have a question. I am ready to read your question there, brother. Inshallah. Brother Ali, what is the best comprehensive book you would recommend on Ilmul Kalam? Depending on what Ilmul Kalam do you refer to, if you're referring to uh, the ta'rif or the definition of Kalam as in the matter that refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his proofs, his attributes, his asma wa sifat, names and attributes. Uh, Al-Quran and uh, the likes of these books or if you're referring to the creed because we we as Shia we define Ilm Al-Karam as the science that is responsible to search the proofs of all of the Aqaid everything all of the Aqaid from Tawheed all the way to uh, Mi'ad all the way to the, uh, the day of judgment. So we research the proofs of uh, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the names and, of att and attributes, the, um, you know, the things that surround it also. Uh, we discuss the proofs of Nubuwa, the proofs of prophethood, the proofs, we discuss the proofs of Imama, and all of these uh, matters. And I like we study all of these matters. So if you if you're referring to the first one, there are some good books by an individual by name of uh, Jafar Subhani. He's a scholar. He's a current contemporary. His book is uh, is somewhat easy. One can refer to it, inshallah. Uh, there is obviously for more comprehensive books, you'd have to go to the old books of Alim Kalam, the books of Tusi. The books of Sharif al murtada the book of Mufid, uh, the books of Mufid. There are several books. Uh, these these books are much more, you know, comprehensive and much more detailing. And I, I I would recommend for the brothers and sisters who are interested in this regard to refer to the old books. The new books are definitely good. Some of them are okay. Some of them are decent, yani. they'll, do the, they'll do the job. But the, uh, if one wants to have a complete understanding and a good, you know, profound understanding, one should go to, go to the old works. Specifically, Shaykh al Tusi, there are several works on this regard. Sharif al Murtada, uh, which is the student of Shaykh al Mufid and Shaykh al Mufid alike. Al Alam al Hilli, Al Alam al Hilli's book in Kalam, uh, I believe it's called. 
uh, I forgot its name right now, but it's, it's known. It's very well known. You can just write Alam al Hali, books on Kalam. The first one, because I believe it has three or two, perhaps even more than that, but I'm aware of two or three. Uh, the first one will come out. Uh, it's the most, sometimes it's studied also by uh, Hausa students. Uh, although in Hausa, in Najaf and uh, Qom, it's mostly you just study fiqh and usul. You don't really study kalam, nor do you study you know, tafsir, and this is a problem in, the, in this matter. But in any regard, these are the books that are good, really. Uh, and also the creedal books. You can go to Aqaid uh, al-Imamiya, which is a more, it is a, bo- it is a book that is taught in the Hawza, Aqaid al-Imamiya by uh, Muhammad Rida al-Mudaffar. Uh, this book is, is a good book. And many, there's many people who have actually went forth to uh, exegete this work, this valuable work. It's a very good book. It's in Kalam, or, 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 of course. It's Aqaid, really. Uh, you can also go to Haqq uh, al by Alam al Majlisi. That is also a good book. There are various books. There are various books on Kalam. It's a very big science, and it's, a most, it's the most science that's. Uh, is very interesting and uh, one does not, although one really has to يعني, open his mind good. <laughs> he needs to open his, uh, his mind and absorb these information because sometimes they, they may get. يعني, uh, perhaps one day uh, we'll, we'll make like a short video or a, or a short, perhaps one of the social, social stories that. Uh, we've been doing prior to the month of Muharram um, where we, I bring most books because I've done a social story regarding the books of Creed because we've been asked about you know books of Creed in the English language I mentioned I bought the books and I showed them that this, these are the books that are good perhaps we'll do one for Ilm al-Kalam inshallah any more questions inshallah I think there's a Bakri in chat. Um, I mean, I think you should call in, but we are waiting. I mean, we know we. It's the same story over again. You know, they just it's all bark, no bite. Mm. You know? So. My brother CJ writes, brother Ali, why do Sunnis? Uh, you should call them Bakri's brother. We are the real Sunnah. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ala wa man mata ala hubbi ali Muhammadin mata ala sunnati wal jama'ah. Alas, the one, or verily, the one who dies upon the love and adherence between two brackets. To Ahlul Bayt's blessings be upon them. He dies upon the Sunnah and Jama'ah. And this is the only hadith that has this term. You know, if you, look, if you were to look at all of the corpus of the Bakri sect, you would not find the term Sunnah and Jama'ah in their, in their hadith. Sunnah and Jama'ah, one, uh, these two words together. You would not find uh, them in this hadith. They're only there in our, in, in our uh, corpus. Them saying they are Sunnis, in reality they are not. They are not following the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa for the true Sunni and the title Ala Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, I am upon the Sunnah and Jama'ah is only entitled to the Shia. None other than them. If we were to call them, we will call them Bakriya. Why? Or those who refer to themselves as Sunnis. We'll call them Bakriya. Why? Is because they have chosen to follow Abu Bakr ibn Abi Quhafa instead of following the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi in his command to follow the Ahlul Bayt's blessings be upon him. So we are the Sunnah. We are upon the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Not them. They are upon the Sunnah of Aisha Abu Bakr. Not upon the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He says, um, Brother Ali, why do Sunnis say they love Hussein and call Yazid? Uh, is there is there an issue with the live show, brother? Uh, going back, um, 
Why do Sunnis uh, say uh, they love Hussein alayhi salam and curse? Uh, sorry, I missed the I missed the text. Brother Ali, why do Sunnis say they love Hussein and call Yazid rahimahullah? They have no shame. May Allah curse them. That is that is true, dear brother. These individuals, obviously not all of them. We have some form of yani, insaf. There are some people who absolutely curse Yazid and disregard him and disassociate from him. However, there are people that are truly nusab. They are Nasiris. They blatantly say Yazid, yes, Yazid rahimahullah, radiyallahu anhu, they say. The killer of the grandson of the messenger, a man who massacred the grandson of the messenger and his family, including a six-month-year-old baby, you praise him. Rahimahullah. Let's not speak about him. Let's not speak about the rulers. Obey the ruler. Obey the ruler whether he was to usurp your money and whether he, whether he was to lash your, your back. We obey the ruler. This is what they fell to. This is what they fell into after they neglected Ahlul Bayt They understood the, word, the, the verse of Ulil Amr wrong, so they went to these rulers and neglected Ahlul Bayt Despite Ahlul Bayt saying, We are Al Ulil Amr. We are those of authority. They understood the verses wrong, so they went to follow these tyrants. And this is what they fell into. You would find that, for example, Ibn al Arabi, Ibn al Arabi al Maliki, Ibn al Arabi al Maliki. The author of Al Awasim min Al Qawasim, min Al Qawasim. He blatantly insults Imam Al Hussein. Blessings be upon him. And says he was wrong in, in coming out against Yazid. He was foolish. He says, "May the damnations of Allah be upon him." He says, "May, may Allah." Uh, he says he was foolish. He was foolish to believe the promise of the Kufans, and he's the one who got himself killed. For indeed, he was killed, Al Hussein. Blessings be upon him, with the sword of his grandfather. He says that Hussein, the grandson of the Messenger of Allah, was killed by his grandfather's sword. Because he's the one supposedly who set the principle that we don't come out against the ruler. Look at the nasb. Look at the hatred to Ahlul Bayt. This matter really cannot be debated, really. It really cannot be debated. So sorry, this, nation, so. this nation has truly oppressed the Ahlul Bayt and stepped on their necks and massacred them. And it's up to the person who has some type of honesty, some type of insaf, to be honest with himself and see light where it is. Yes, so, Ali, We have a caller who wants to convert to Shia Islam. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, Allah Alhamdulillah. Connect with her now. InshaAllah. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Sorry, I just need to. Sorry, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Assalamu alaikum, dear sister. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear sister, on the show. May Allah bless you, inshallah, and accept from you. Yeah. You would like to announce your shahada, inshallah? Yeah. Yeah, could you do it slowly as well, please? I'm yes. A bit yes, inshallah. Emotional. Yes, inshallah, of course, inshallah. But first, we would like to hear your story to Shia Islam, inshallah. Um, for me, it was a bit of a. So I was always like, I was a regular Sunni, like, I was Bakri, I should say. Hmm. Um, I was very um, aware of their ways, I was really knowledgeable in what they did. But there was something about it, I was always wanting to know why did. She has viewed the companions differently. What was was Aisha really who she seemed to be? Was she really this great woman that I thought she was? Who were Abu Bakr and why why do we curse him? Like I was just really I wanted to know the truth. So I actually started researching um, a while ago, like maybe a year ago. But I was really lazy when doing it. Mm. Um, I didn't really take any. I would say I didn't take much of an interest as I should have done because with me I was always interested in Islam. I decided to go to a um, Islamic school because I wanted to find religion for myself. 
but that school was you know it was full of bakri so they don't teach you much about shia islam they don't teach you the truth they had a lot of it hidden mm. so um one day i sat and i i sat on the prayer mat and i just asked Allah. i cried for like two nights and i was asking to be guided i asked for like me to see the truth i was like lost and then a couple of months ago i lost my friends and they both passed away in a week of each other so i realized i don't have enough time to be wasting and then once again i i prayed constantly constantly i asked for allah to help me and guide me with people like bring me closer with people you know that can possibly help me and alhamdulillah there was one person that genuinely helped a lot he used to work within this organization at one point um and he introduced me to the lecture that Sheikh Yasser does so I watched I decided to start watching them and then it became pretty clear from there quite fast um I didn't know I couldn't ignore I couldn't carry on ignoring the truth it didn't feel right for me so yeah that was kind of that was kind of it i just decided to alhamdulillah make praise a be change, to allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala praise be to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding you and ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you immensely inshallah um, and fill your heart with light inshallah and grant you paradise with the messenger and his purified progeny blessings be upon you and pave your way mm -hmm. to success inshallah in your life and service to ahlul bayt alaykum as salam as long as you live inshallah um in the name of allah inshallah repeat after me ashhadu ashhadu anna la ilaha illa allah anna la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah wahdahu la sharika lah wa annahu wa annahu la shabiha lahu لا شبيه له ولا نظير ولا نذير جل جلاله جل جلاله I testify I testify that there is no god but Allah alone that there's no god but Allah alone who has no partner who has no partner and I testify and I testify that he the exalted that he the exalted has no likeness nor resemblance has no likeness no resemblance ashhadu ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah anna muhammadar rasulullah wa annahu khatamul anbiya'i wal mursalin could we go a bit slower please? sure sure inshallah wa annahu wa annahu khatam khatam al anbiya al anbiya wal mursalin والمرسلين وسيد الخلق أجمعين وسيد الخلق المجمعين أجمعين أجمعين ومبرأ و... sorry can you repeat شو ومبرأ ومدرأ من كل عيب من كل عيب وشين وشين صلى الله عليه وآله sallallahu alayhi wa alihi i testify i testify that muhammad is the messenger of allah that muhammad is the messenger of allah the seal of all prophets and messengers the seal of all prophets and messengers the master of all creation the master of all creation and that he is irreproachable and that he is inapproachable and that he is irreproachable but he's inapproachable and impeccable and impeccable meaning that the messenger of allah is perfect in all forms in all ways unlike yeah. what the bakri sects say that the prophet yeah. was bewitched or the prophet uh, he you know was delirious he yeah. began to say things which he did not understand we cleanse and we purify our creed from this type of belief so we say that he is irreproachable yeah. and impeccable perfect in all forms yeah أشهد أشهد أن أمير المؤمنين أن أمير المؤمنين عليا ولي الله علي ولي الله I testify I testify that Ali 
the other thing. The commander of the faithfuls. The commander of the faithfuls. Is the vice gerent of Allah. Is the vice gerent. Gerent of Allah. Of Allah. Ashhadu. Of Allah. Ashhadu. أن فاطمة الزهراء. أن فاطمة الزهراء. وأبناء أهل معصومين. Could you just say sure. that bit again, please? Sure, sure. وأبناء أها. وأبناء أها. المعصومين. المعصومين. حجج الله. حجج الله. صلوات الله عليهم. صلوات الله عليهم. I testify. I testify. That's فاطمة الزهراء. And her infallible sons. And, the, and her infallible sons. Are the divine proofs of Allah. Are the divine proofs of Allah. Abra'u ila Allah. Ab, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Abra'u. Abra'u. Ila Allah. Ila Allah. Min Abi Bakr. Min Abu, Bak Abu Bakr. Wa Umar. Wa Umar. Wa Uthman. Wa Uthman. وعائشة وعائشة وحفصة وحفصة وسائر أعداء وسائر أعداء أهل بيت رسول الله أهل بيت رسول الله I stand before Allah I stand before Allah in disassociation in disassociation disassociation from Abu Bakr from Abu Bakr عمر عمر عثمان عائشة حفصة Uthman, Aisha, and Hafsa. And all the enemies of the pure household of the Prophet. And all the enemies of the pure household of the Prophet. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anna Aba Bakri. Aba Bakri. Anna Aba Bakri. Anna Aba Bakri. Wa Umar. Wa Umar. Wa Uthman. Wa Uthman. Wa Aisha. Wa Aisha. Wa Hafsa. Wa Hafsa. In Nar. In Nar. I testify. I testify. That Abu Bakr. That Abu Bakr. Omar. Omar. Uthman, Aisha, and Hafsa. Uthman, Aisha, and Hafsa. Are certainly in hellfire. Are certainly in hellfire. May Allah bless you, inshaAllah. And Amen. grant you paradise with the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and his progeny. And illuminate your face with Iman. And ask Allah <laughs> subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you your wishes and sanctify your heart and make you a sign and an example for the women throughout the world, insha'Allah. Yes, May Allah accept from you, insha'Allah, and prolong your life and keep you safe. Amen. Thank you very much, insha'Allah. Allah yahfadkum, insha'Allah. May Allah Thank protect you. So much. Thank you very much for your call. Thank you. Amen. Allah. Alhamdulillah. Dear brothers, Alhamdulillah, this show has been, I feel that inshallah this show has been uh, a blessed show, a show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought guidance through. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this honor and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm upon this way and sincere in our intention and to keep us motivated to serve Ahlul Bayt's blessings be upon them and reveal to the people the oppression that befell them and inshallah lead people to embark on this ark of salvation that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said that whoever who embarks it shall be saved, and whoever who falls behind shall drown. Until next time, insha'Allah. Hada wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ahli bayti al-tayyibin al-tahirin wa la'natullahi ala qatalatihim wa a'da'ihim ajma'in.